Okay. Next up is the Harvest Festival request to use, uh, to use city property. Uh, Tasha. So I'm going to ask Patrick Nauman to come up and uh, give this presentation. Where, don't, where you wanna, Patrick? I don't, see him. don't you want to read that? <laughs> I'm going to leave it to you. Take it away. Mayor and Council. Good evening. I wore my proper attire tonight. Thank so, you. You're welcome. I feel like I can hear you now. That's good. I'm glad. I wouldn't, I wouldn't want to be hiding in the back. Uh, so I, I come to you tonight because uh, recently I was made aware of uh, some folks, uh, the gentlemen that own Second Chance out on Highway 95 who have put on the Fall Bazaar for the last 16 years on their property have elected to no longer do that bazaar, um, effective this, starting this year. Um, Citing especially safety concerns along the Highway 95 corridor uh, with parking issues and those kind of things. Uh, and it's just kind of outgrown their facility. They have usually 70 vendors uh, with a wait list of anywhere from 30 to 50 vendors that they cannot accommodate uh, in order to get into that show. Todd uh, Davies brought this to my attention about three, four weeks ago that uh, they were not going to be able to do that any longer. And it took me probably about 15 minutes to say, well, sure, why not? Why don't I do it? So um, I come to you today to ask for permission to be able to move that event that's been basically in our community already, but move it into downtown. Uh, and on keeping the same dates, October 4th and 5th, uh, rebranding it as the Harvest Bazaar um, and kind of trying to bring back a version of the Harvest Festival that used to be in town. It is the same weekend as Mud Drags, um, and so it, will, it already has something else going on with, with that weekend, and I've actually already been approached by somebody that would like to plan a fun run for that weekend as well, too. And I have plans in visiting with other local business owners about doing barn dances or those kind of things as well. Um, and then the way that I have kind of designed the uh, yeah, barn dances, um, also known as a hoedown, um, uh, so the, the way that I have designed that would be able to put the booths down through the center of the street, leaving the sidewalks uh, available for businesses to run sidewalk sales and, and access into all of the businesses. Uh, I foresee that after Mike's help figuring out exactly how much room I have on each city block that we're going to need for sure two blocks uh, with potentially an overflow into the third block. And that's why I come tonight to ask for permission to be able to close off the streets uh, from Court Street all the way to commercial, but yet leaving each individual main thoroughfare accessible. So that'll leave Court Street, Main Street, Idaho, and commercial all available to traffic. We'll just block off from the inside of the crosswalks on each, on each one, which will then also give us ample, maybe not ample parking, but more parking around the depot and subsequent areas there for the community to be able to park and for people to travel in. Uh, and then I'm also working on other ideas for, for additional parking lots um, as well to be able to accommodate that traffic. So. Mm -hmm. And okay. I might add that I already have people calling to request booth space. <laughs> I've already started the wait list for booth space. Um, and I have, I have visited with every single business on all three blocks that that will uh, that that will affect and I actually have signatures from every single business that will uh, That will be on that. I do have two businesses that unfortunately have only been able to give me a verbal uh, So far because both of those representatives are out of town and won't be back in town until later this week But they've said that they'll come sign the paper as soon as they're back in town at the end of the week So that gives me a signature then by Friday of every business on that three block stretch so. Very exciting I'd like it to be a test run for permanent closure. <laughs> we can make our own 8th Street. You see, right here in, in Missouri. If you read the minutes from the Main Street meeting, you know that's one of my dreams. So, um, but, uh, and by the way, that's Economic Development Task Force. Oh, um, task Force. I just looked so, at Mike, he didn't correct so, me. I know, that's okay. That's true. <laughs> um, but so it would it would effectively close off those three blocks uh, and give me the availability if we close off all three blocks I'm actually on the third block between court and uh, and Maine would probably only utilize about half of that block uh, In order to put booths in and keep the other half open uh, My intention is to talk to Rizzoni's or someone to put on a barn dance 
um, in the other half of that block on Friday night. So, uh, and I've already visited with, part of the reason for that is because people's furniture would like to leave that alley accessible for delivery trucks and, and those kind of things, because Friday is a heavy delivery day for them, so that would leave that available to them. That should allow me to put in about 110 to 115 vendor booths uh, in those two and a half blocks. So. Okay. Is there need for power? Um, nope. Nothing like that? Nope. Okay. Everybody will be self-contained. Um, I am not going to bring in or recruit food trucks because I would like them and encourage them to, local to places use already. local places to eat. There's Good. plenty of places to eat within walking distance. Um, I know one that I can recommend right off the top of my hand. <laughs> um, but uh, <laughs> Dude's Kitchen is amazing. Um, uh, and then um, I've also visited with Jennifer Huff about uh, Farmer's Market, and we're going to uh, try to encourage as many of the folks from the Farmer's Market. The Farmer's Market will end probably about a week before, but we're going to try to include as many of the folks from the Farmer's Market to plan another additional week to include them into the vendors as well too. So that we'll have another kind of final farewell for the for the farmer's market as well, so. So Troy, do you see any issues with this? I kind of spoke with the chief a little bit this morning, but do you have any concerns, questions? Lieutenant Troy Crown, Weasel Police Department. No, the police department doesn't have any concerns other than leaving the streets open is a great idea. <clears throat> I would recommend putting uh, temporary stop signs where there's no traffic control. Other than that, no issues. So you're talking like commercial? Like stopping them at the commercial? Commercial. Oh, that would be about it. Is that, oh, court uh, has it already. So are the one-way streets, are, are they like state highway, right? Does, mm -hmm. does that pose a problem for us to put temporary stop signs on them? Yeah, I'd probably have to discuss that with ITD. I'd so the only one that would be in question would be Idaho? Idaho. Idaho's the only one that... And it's a one-way street talking... Because Maine already has the stoplights. The stoplight. Commercial, no. Right. Okay. Commercial's on a state highway. Commercial, we can do. Idaho is the only one in where it's a one-way. It'd only be... We'd stop signs one side going one. I mean, it wouldn't be too big a deal. And I, I'll, I'll discuss that with ITD. I don't think they'll have a problem with that as a temporary. I wouldn't think so either, but the, the high potential for that amount of pedestrian traffic yeah we can definitely verify that is that we definitely won't have the manpower to uh, patrol that and and run um, pedestrian traffic back and forth on those streets so. especially with other events going on in town because we have not off this hand yeah so does does it, it uh, require on on our streets does it require uh, council action to uh, to install the, the stop signs, or is that just something that no. can be done administratively? We can do that administratively. Okay. And the only reason this is coming before council um, is because there will be vendors on the street. If you were just closing off the street for, and, and it's a new event. So it wouldn't even be something that needed to come to council year after year, kind of like the, the Rock the Park. Once it's approved, it's approved. But anytime there's a new event that has vendors selling on city property, it has to come to the council. Okay. All right. So if later down the road we want to reconsider, do we have any uh, way to do that? Absolutely. You could just say this can't happen again next year without changes or you know something different. You can, you can do that. Yeah. Okay. All right. October 4th and 5th. Um, so what, uh, uh, our fire department, did, were, have they been consulted? Did they? We usually just make sure when we set everything up that they have a fire lane, which I think is, Ron, you might correct me, 18 feet wide or 16 feet wide fire lane going to the center to allow fire access is all they require. Um, some of the vendors, if they're cooking, will be required to be inspected by the fire department to have fire extinguishers. Or meat oh, and I don't okay. think he's gonna but he's not having any food vendors, vendors, so... That would take them out of that, except for the travel through line. Okay. All right. Thank Any more questions? Me. I'd like to motion that we approve and authorize the mayor. Oh, sorry. Excuse me. I'd like to motion that we 
approve the Harvest Festival request for use of city property. I'll second. Okay, there's a, a motion and a second. Um, all those in favor say aye. 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 Opposed nay. That motion passes.